If you're deploying SharePoint framework solutions into your environment, or maybe you've got third-party solutions that you've deployed into your environment, then there's a silent change that could break those web parts. And you won't even know it until it's too late. Microsoft is rolling out the Content Security Policy Enforcement. What this is going to do is block all scripts from external sources unless they're a trusted source. In this video, I'm going to break down what that means, how you're going to configure this stuff to make sure that your stuff won't break. Let's get into it. So what is this content security policy enforcement thing? Well, it is intended to help prevent things like cross-site scripting attacks and other malicious behavior by locking down where scripts can be loaded from in your SharePoint environment. Typically, SharePoint framework components will be loading the scripts directly from your SharePoint environment. So there's no issues there. But there's a lot of other scenarios where a script could be deployed to a content delivery network. Now, what that means is instead of your computer having to go all the way back to SharePoint to grab a JavaScript file, and you could be in a different geographic location, which means it could take quite a bit longer to get that file. What the, the CDN does, the content delivery network, is it stores a copy of the file all over the globe. And so your computer would instead go to the closest CDN to grab that file. So you're going to get it from in a much faster way, which means your SharePoint pages load faster. So, so in very large organizations where users are scattered all over the globe, CDNs are very, very helpful to make sure that SharePoint runs fast. Now, currently, this feature is rolling out. And what that means is Eventually, it's going to start blocking those scripts, but it's not blocking them yet. It is, however, tracking all of those scripts. So you will be seeing warnings in your browser's developer toolbar, and your compliance administrator using Purview will be seeing these errors uh, or warnings showing up inside Purview. You know what? Let's let's just switch over to the uh, the admin center, and let's start taking a look at this thing. So I'm here in the, here in the admin center. Uh, for let's go over to the well. I got the, I've got the SharePoint admin center right here. This is where I want to be first. Now you'll find this setting. If you go into advanced, and then you'll see an option here. We always had API access. Uh, that's where you would approve uh, graph permissions and stuff for web parts. But this is the new option, script sources. And this is where you'll be adding those trusted sources to, so that SharePoint knows to allow scripts from that location. It is as simple as you click, a, click add source, and you'll type in, you know, your CDN endpoint here, my CDN dot, I don't know, my domain dot com, something like that. You would type this in and add it. And that's it. Now that location is whitelisted for when content security policy begins enforcing and blocking those scripts. And this isn't something that would just affect uh developers using CDNs for custom SharePoint solutions. If you're using a scripts tag somewhere, if you're using um, if you're using JavaScript to dynamically load additional scripts, then all of those different avenues could be blocked as well. So you want to make sure your your developers are in the know with this setting what it means for them, and what they need to start looking for. There's a link in the description below to help uh, to, to give further guidance about this so that they can start checking their code, identifying endpoints like a CDN, like other uh, avenues, where they need to get that domain whitelisted. They need to get that information to the, the SharePoint administrator so that they can get that added, or they can move files around, whatever they need to do to make sure that their components don't break because eventually a user is just going to see a blank web web part on a page somewhere. There's just going to be something that's just not working and you're not going to know why. Now, if you've gotten value from this video so far, then smack that like button and subscribe to this channel so you can stay up to date with all of these different important SharePoint changes. New features, breaking changes, all that kind of stuff is right here. Now, I mentioned this feature isn't supposed to be 
making your life miserable. That's not what the intention is of this. It's just enforcing a tighter security posture of your SharePoint environment. In the end, it's going to protect you and your data. And that's a great thing. Speaking of protecting your data, let's talk about backing up that important data. Today, many organizations rely on Microsoft 365 for everything from email, collaboration, conferencing, and calendars to documents, internal communications. Yet this critical data that can be lost as easily as it's created. Threats like cyber attacks, retention gaps, or even a simple delete click can leave data inaccessible and cause costly downtime. Nakivo Backup and Replication seamlessly bridges this gap to ensure your Microsoft 365 data and Exchange Online, OneDrive for Business, SharePoint Online, and Microsoft Teams is backed up and easily recoverable. You can send Microsoft 365 backups and backup copies anywhere, local folders, Folders, cloud platforms, NFS and SMB shares, tape media, and duplication appliances. The solution offers advanced ransomware protection features that include backup encryption and immutability. Microsoft 365 data loss does not need to happen. With Nakivo backup and replication, you can ensure maximum protection of Microsoft 365 data. Make sure to check out Nakivo in the link in the description below for a free 15-day trial. Now, one thing to note about your SharePoint framework development is that if you're using the CDN base path property in your application manifest, then SharePoint will automatically import that into this setting. So it'll auto, it'll it'll handle that auto automatically. All you have to do is just declare in the SharePoint framework component that you are using a CDN. So that part is great. So how do you get to the point where you have that list of whitelisted domains for your content security policy enforcement. Well, one way is you can open up the developer tab of your browser. In there, you'll see in the console tab, and you'll see any errors that are relating to content security policy. There's a really good indication right there because these errors will be logged already because if this feature is in your environment, it's already throwing warnings. The other place you could look is inside purview. So we go back to the Microsoft Admin Center and we go to Microsoft Purview. Then under Solutions you'll see audit. Here is where you would want to look for content security policy. You probably can just do a keyword search right here for a particular time frame, and it would return any content security policy violations here. So that's another place that you could look, and you probably should be looking, especially if you've got custom development or third-party development. If, you, if you're just using only Microsoft uh, components straight out of the box. You have nothing to worry about. But other than that, you want to be double checking all this stuff to make sure your components don't break. Now, if this content security policy is news to you and you're just finding out about this thing that's potentially going to break uh, your, your web parts in SharePoint, then you need to be staying up to date on all the news around SharePoint. If that's you, I've got a newsletter that is perfect for you. It goes out once a week and it keeps you in the know with all things SharePoint and and co-pilot. So there's a link in the description below. Sign up for that and you'll get the next episode I send out. And if you want to see more great SharePoint features, because there's been a lot that has come out lately, very, very big features like the knowledge agent, then just click or tap the screen and I'll see you over there.